and welcome to another exciting edition of the Love Power Show called Somebody because we're on the air and we're screaming loud and sparing none. Every Sunday from 2 to 3 we have guests who are interesting, exciting, knowledgeable, thought provoking and fascinating. We're talking about everything right here from the sublime to the ridiculous. We make the sublime clear. We make the ridiculous make sense. And we provide leadership. We're discussing all of the relevant issues, debating the issues, taking positions, defining and defending those positions, offering analysis, presenting solutions, and providing leadership. Yes, I said leadership. Leadership, absolutely, and exactly. Today, we're talking about, well, Dr. Black was supposed to be with us. I don't know if he's on his way. I have not heard from him. Dr. Black's outside. Yes, Dr. Clifford Black. He's an uh, etymologist, linguist, wordsmith, whatever you want to call it. And he likes to talk about learning, learning how to learn. We've got a crowded field today. Today, we're going to be talking about the mayoral race. And we're going to be talking about the upcoming boycott. I think I see Dr. Black outside. And Isaac, can we get Brothers Keeper? Got a roll. So once we hear that, we're going to roll. Can I get some volume on him? Or is that the best we can get? Yeah, I like that. Hey, you gotta catch up on my freedom. <laughs> yep. I need to leave up out one time. Can you do that? See if I can 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 see Everybody in All right. Brothers keep everybody. Gotta roll. They said we gotta roll. Mm -hmm. Gotta catch up on my freedom. I know. <laughs> See, you better try to find out now, Dr. Black. Dr. Black has showed up. He's here. And Dr. Black, we're talking about. We've got a private field. We're talking about your specialty, learning how to learn, and once you learn how to learn, you will be learned. My, my, but I know also that your specialty is thinking. That's my specialty as well. We talk a lot about critical thinking. So perhaps what you're saying is a prerequisite to learn. Yes, I, I love the song too, but let's get right on into our text today. Hold on a second. We have a call on the line already? I, I, I got a free screen to call. I don't know who the call is. Okay. Free three, screen. Two, one. All right. So, Al, grab a line. Omar Booker, grab a line. Akil Mensa, give us a call. Doug Alsabrook, we're on the air. And give us a call. Also, we have Omar Baruti in the studio. We have Miley in the studio, Jeffrey Steele, Taluk El Amin, Lonnie Simmons, and Brother Lacey in the studio with us as well. We have a crowded field today, and if you have a question or a comment, feel free to step to the microphone, and you can use mine if you want to. It's okay. <laughs> I want to go to Dr. Black first. And the reason I want to go to Dr. Black first is because we, we, we have the boycott issue on the table. 
and we know the history of child boycott. Then we have this past mayoral election on the table. But let's talk about learning first okay. and, and thinking critically. That's what we do here. That's what we try to do anyway. So perhaps you can help us expand and expound our heart horizon today, Dr. Black. So, and generally what we do, we take two, three minutes, four minutes, and if you go too long, then I'll start looking upside your head. But uh, <laughs> go ahead, Dr. Black, take off on me. I don't know. I, I um, you know, you've been around me for a number of years, and, uh, you know, basically, I ask questions. Mm. I ask questions because I'm curious about um, what a person might actually know versus what a person believes or what they assume that they know, you know, what they've, um, re what they tend to repeat things from cliches. They don't really know what it is that they're talking about. So are you, are you saying that when you get into belief and this other word you use takes us into Opinions, oh, which is dangerous. Which is okay, go dangerous. ahead. Go ahead. I, 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 I'm, I'm more, more times than not, I'm used to people telling me about they have a right to their opinions. And the only right I know that you have with your opinion is that you have a right to keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm not mistaken, the word opinion leads you to assumption. And it will also lead you to... Uh, accepting something without without asking any questions about what it is that you're accepting without any knowledge of what you're accepting and you know it's just like we got a bunch of folks running around here you ask them something simple like what was king james last name and i think they'll tell you they thought king was his first name and james was his last <laughs> but now they want to tell you all about a particular thing that they believe but they don't have any idea of where it actually originates. And I think Gabral, what's his name? Gabral? Milka, Milka Gabral. He said, return to the source. Right. So if you really want to understand something, you have to investigate where its origins are. Right. And to that degree, what we have around us is a whole lot of folks trying to address a problem without understanding where the formula comes from right. or how it ignited in the first place the problem. So they definitely don't know how to solve any problems. They keep using the same formula and they keep getting the same and results. That's, and that's going to lead them into nonsense. Nonsense. And what's what what is also characterized as insanity, insanity as well. Collective and it was, insanity. Right. And it was a long time before I realized people didn't know that Christ was anointed. It wasn't really a name. So they were saying the guy's name, well, the, word, the brother's the name, word Jesus Christ, Christ. The word Christ, relative to its etymology, actually is the uh, anointed one. Mm -hmm. But the word Christ evolves from the word crystal. Mm -hmm. And you remember how you used to watch all the little Snow Whites and all the different little fairy tales that they made up and, and someone would always have to look into a crystal ball. Well, that crystal was supposed to be where they would see something. But what the chrysalis is, is a place that evolves. And you evolve from a chrysalis state. You know, you're talking about hydrochloride salts. Mm -hmm. And these are crystals. But the original crystal was carbon. This is a carbonaceous organism, the planet itself. In its pure black state, it is the black stone. And so this carbonaceous organism is the crystal. And once you understand the nature of that crystal, then you understand the word Christ, mm -hmm. or Christ, or Krishna, or any other number of words that are associated with the term that everyone is calling Christ, which is, again, like I said, a title, mm -hmm. not a name. And a little bit more elaboration on the nature of the of crystal. Well, the crystal is nature itself. In other words, the planet is a natural component of an organism that is out here in the universe 
We don't know how it comes into existence other than they say that it comes from a thought. And if a thought is the cause of it all, well then that thought became a word. And that word, in English, becomes be. And according to the stories, as it is now translated in English, it says, and it is. And it is. Okay. Is Lonnie here? Did I see Lonnie Simmons? Lonnie's not here today. Okay, well, we'll get into that a little bit later on. I was looking for him. I um, want to say something real quick. The number to call, if you want to get on the line, all of you brothers, I just called out there. 901-327-2500. Also, we want to say something about Marcus Garvey. Give Brother Jabril a call at 643-6271 so that we can get that ball rolling at Marcus Garvey Institution. Now, listen to the female solution Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 at 347-539-5639. You'll find that they have some in interesting topics. They say female solution, but I hear a lot of brothers calling in as well. So maybe it's going to be a combination of things, but it's, it's a great show to listen to. And also, you said something, Dr. Black, about one of our favorite persons. You said something about Emil Cockabra. Okay. And return to the source. Yeah. And he was an agronomist, study of the land, plant, culture, and all that, and how he described the how you can learn so much. Well, he was him. basically a teacher. Right, right. And when the war broke out, which was the war not breaking out, it had always been there. <laughs> they made him a general in the army. And 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 what he was trying to do, pretty much like OG Man in Vietnam, what he was trying to do was get people to understand it was more to a war than just picking up a gun and trying to fight with um, with, you know, some instrument, some weapon, you know, rather than fighting with, with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And that's what Cabral was trying to do. He, along with Patrice Lumumba, right. um, they, were, they were contemporaries, basically. And he was not forced into, but he had to accept the position to become a general in the army in Guinea. Uh, like okay. I said, he was basically a teacher. Right. Well, he was. And one of the things that, that stands out when we were reading the book and talking about it many years ago, and I went back again and looked at it, that when we're talking about learning and thinking, that he understands something that you've said all along, Talu, is that you must know your terrain. You must know your people. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you can not only be a general, but you can be a teacher. I want to go to you, Omar, and let's come this way. Omar, what do you say about thinking, learning, teaching, and how relevant is it to African Americans today, more specifically, this past <coughs> mayoral election? Uh, you, you know, I, I want to thank the uh, listening audience for tuning in today. Uh, we really have a problem with thinking. Black people, uh, from my own perspective, don't do a lot of thinking. They follow instructions from the white establishment as to what they should do. If they really took time to think about it before they did it, most of the things they do, they wouldn't do it at all. <laughs> most of it. Uh, but because we have lost the art of thinking, critical thinking, then we have become slaves to the media that control our thinking. And we got to change that. Talu, this past mayoral election, and, and we, we've highlighted our discussion today along the lines of learning and learning how to think. What about this past election? Mm -hmm. Well, the last election clearly, just start, clearly, just start. you don't have to move, just start. Um, establishes the fact that black Memphians, or so called black Memphians, have lost their minds. We have um, now surrendered all political power, yes. all political influence, our political self-determination to white Caucasian Europeans, period. All of the county elected officers are white Caucasian European. 
our major political offices in the city are white, uh, held by white Caucasian Europeans. We set ourselves back more than 50 years, um, um, 50 years, imagine that, set back. In other words, we are exactly where we were 50 years ago politically in Memphis, Tennessee. We have to come with a new grassroots movement to raise ourselves back up, a new leadership, and get back into politics. We're outside of politics. The mayor of this city is a Caucasian man. The congressman of the 9th Congressional District is a Caucasian man. The city uh, 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 clerk is a Caucasian woman. And again, all county elected officers are Caucasian people. What? So did, did we did we did we get smart? Did we get smart by electing this? Are we uh, have we gotten to the point where, as so many have said, color doesn't matter? What happened to us? How do you get in a situation that you defeated 50 years ago all over again? It's the question. How do we how do we do it? Are we comfortable? Are we happy now? Are we happier? Do we feel like we achieved something great? That's what each election is about. Achieving something great, magnificent, forging ahead in the future. Did we do any of that in the last several elections? Okay, let's talk about it going around town. Okay, let's do this. You all share that mic. And Talu and I will share this mic, but let me show you how. Set it in the, sit in the middle, close, as close as you can to the edge of the table. You only need six uh, six inches, and you, it'll turn to you. Malik, did you do any research? We'll be talking yesterday. You're doing the research. You want to go next? Yes, and sir. Just turn the mic to you if you want to get at least six six uh, inches. Yes, sir. Into I'm the mic. Gonna, Lean I'm into it. I'm going to go back to what the brother just said about what happened to us. Uh, I think what happened to us is the same thing that happened all over the country. Propaganda is controlling the people's mind, their thoughts, and essentially their actions. Uh, that's why we voted at 24% in a city that's 86% black, where clearly you can be in control and running every position that it is to run. Uh, I don't see a reason why the mayor position wasn't won as well as any other position in the city when we're talking about a magnitude and a number of people that clearly um, outnumbers the other group of people. Um, the only thing that I personally can come up with is propaganda. We being ran and controlled by other media outlets, uh, other sources of information. People are not conscious and just not willing to step up to the plate and do what needs to be done. Okay. We want to sit around and beg other people to do what we should do for ourselves. Um, it's crazy. Okay. I think that word insanity has come up a couple of times now. We may be hearing more than as we go forward. But uh, what is the guy's name, Collins? What's his first name? Harold. Harold Collins and Mike Williams ran uh, for mayor as well. And then we had Jim Strickland emerge. Is this a political strategy, a payout, a buyout, whatever the case may be? Jeffrey, I see you taking some notes there. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually on his comment earlier on, on the thinking. On the um, thinking, okay. Um, Go ahead. Basically, um, and I, 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 I was trying to soak in everything that, that you were talking about, our um, ability That's to, Dr. Black. To, to think. Dr. Black? Yes. All right, on your on your uh, previous comment, just um, asking questions. We have to learn um, how to ask questions uh, because we're in a society where we're faced with a whole lot of adversity. So with that adversity, we have to learn how to be skeptics. And skeptics with no mercy. When you get done asking the right question, ask another question. Just dig deeper. But there was something else you, you brought up that I remember studying. I can't remember the name of this, this scientist. And he's talking about the power of, of our thoughts. And we're talking about, um, uh, Brother Malik was just talking about how, how propaganda is, is, is in, my, in my opinion, is dumbing the people down. Where you see these thoughts, these things and, and on the radio, 
they're going through the airwaves. Mm -hmm. And to go back to this Japanese scientist, I, I can't recall his name, but you can look him up on YouTube. He did a um, he did an experiment on thoughts uh, and uh, water crystals, frozen water crystals. And what he found was that these weren't necessarily things that he was saying. What he would do, he would think something positive while the water is out and unfrozen. And after he would, would think that thought, he would put that water into a freezer. And what this water would do in the freezer, depending on whether or not his thoughts were positive or negative, he would pull the water out of the freezer, out of the freezer to see the crystal, the way that the, the, the water would crystallize. And um, he would take words like love, peace, unity, just simple concepts, positive concepts, and when he inspected the crystals, they would show beautiful crystals, looking like snowflakes. But when he had thoughts that were negative, thoughts full of hate, thoughts of destruction, you see, he would put this water into the freezer and pull it out, and instead of the water looking like, like uh, snowflakes, the water would look totally um, contaminated. The crystals would look contaminated. And so I, I, I want to encourage, it's a very, very uh, interesting experiment, and it is available on the World Wide Web. So if you get a chance, you can do a search on, on thoughts and water crystals. That should, should, um, should pull up the experiment. But you see, that's what we have to try to do. We have to take um, media sources like the Love Power Show, <laughs> and we have to start pushing a positive agenda to our people. Because we got to get, get rid of this negativity because this negativity is causing us destruction. Um, so we have to use all the channels we can to uplift our people and uh, get all this negativity and nonsense out of our radio waves. Because if it is affecting water crystals like that, the human body is composed up of 90% of water. So how is this affecting you and how is it affecting your, your mentality? So that, that's what I wanted to add on to what Brother Dr. Black was was. Um, Commenting on okay. Again, the number to call if you want to grab a line, 901-327-2500. Give us a call. Grab a line. Dr. Black, yes, sir. I want to throw the word apathy into this discussion along with the political, hopefully, science that we're talking about. It'll just turn, the whole thing will turn. No, that's, that's, that's about that for you. So you can share it with everyone in okay. English. You know, it's always wise to share water. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Dr. Black has brought us some good water today. So we will partake thereof, I should say. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Black. What are you, let me ask you a question like this. What are your thoughts on the behavior of African Americans, this group of people we're talking about, in the political process, and how does this last election, how is it going to affect well, just, the city of Memphis going forward? Let me see if I can try to address the question. Okay. Um, some of you here with us now. Uh, as far as you know, when did this country start? When did it get started? This country that we live in today. What year did it come into existence? What year was it? If I'm, I'm just going to take a stab at it. I mm -hmm. want to say 1796. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Or is that when Tennessee became a state? I'm Tennessee <laughs> became a state in 1795. Okay. Now, no, you get ready to tell me, though. <laughs> no, nah, I'm waiting on you to tell me. No. <laughs> Does anyone have it when this? The year this country became the United States of America, not the, You're not the, under the Articles of Confederation, okay. Okay. Um, not the thirteen colonies actually sitting down to establish a Congress. I'm talking about the United States of America. Well, it was ratified. Well, 1776. No, 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 no. And I wouldn't ratified. It was what time? 1789. Okay, right, right, right. 1789. Okay. Point that okay. I hope to address your question. Go ahead. With. 
people that I'm relative to, um, and a couple that we all know, we know Benjamin Banneker, you know, I mean from that time, that period of time, we know um, Prince Hall um, and others. Um, and then later we know Major Delaney, mm -hmm. Martin, we know, we know different individuals who have all been trying to address the same um, problems that we're sitting here talking about, the politics in the United States of America, since its inception. And there have been folks, again, who have used formulas to try to deal with whatever the problems were that this group of people that we're relative to are facing. Well, what I'm thinking to address your question is maybe, just maybe, we've been using the same formulas that were being used when this country was formed all this time. And we've been getting the same results all this time. And maybe the results of this last election can actually allow us to do what you're doing right now, come together in order to discuss the politics of this country relative to what people are thinking is going to benefit them. Mm -hmm. If they've been using a bad formula all of this time, then it's time for y'all to address that formula. And you got to throw it out. So mm -hmm. that means you're going to have to sit here and you're going to have to come up with a brand new formula to address the problem if you want to solve it. Because so far you haven't been getting it solved. Okay, let me, let me say this, ask you this, and then come back to you. Lois Lomax gave me a CD. I started listening to it this morning, the one between you and Al. Not his, the other Al. Al Lewis. Yeah, where the question of the formula came up, but I had to leave and come down here. So we talk about the formula. So now, this word that leads to insanity comes back up again. Can you... Point to, in this short time, a formula? No, well, what I hope okay. that I try to do is, and you know I work primarily with young people and those few people who are willing to start with me and do the work. I start with things like the alphabet. You know, in other words, um, uh, this young man has a that outfit that you have on, what area of Africa does it come from? Well, South Africa. So it comes from South Africa. So which group of people would it be relative to? Oh, um, I'm not real sure about okay. that. Well, out of West Africa, they have a thing called talking cloth. Mm -hmm. So when you put the garment on, you're actually reading the garment because the garment is talking. And they have talking drums. They have all kinds of ways to communicate with each other. So what I try to do is I try to get people to start from the beginning. In other words, one of the first things you were taught was the alphabet, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the alphabet now? The alphabet is... Uh, Just say the alphabet. A, B, C. Good. A, B, C, D, E. Mm -hmm. Well, this is weird. This is weird because... I think that's the alphabet that Snuffy taught us. That's not the alphabet. Mm -hmm. The alphabet is pronounced A, B, C, D, D E. E. Mm -hmm. That's the alphabet. So, Jeffrey, you, you seem like you're familiar with, uh, uh, or at little, least that aspect of it. Yeah, a, anyway, little, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to go to Omar now. Omar, what? What you say is a formula for African Americans going for, and let's not be broad about it, let's just say politically. Just, just yeah, there you go, there you go, it, it turns. Let's look at the formula that, that was used to, to uh, win the position of mayor in Memphis. Uh, we have people that went to the polls who were Jews, Italians, Methodists, Catholics, uh, trans, they, they live in Memphis, they're Memphis city and citizens. But the one thing they have in common is regardless of their, uh, their origin in the world and regardless of their religion uh, in terms of how they worship, they're all are white. 
And that one thing bound them together to go and vote for Jim Strickland. Mm -hmm. When we when we got our first black mayor in Memphis, uh, Dr. Harrington, <coughs> we had to meet, and we had to decide that we're gonna have one black person running against Hackett. And when we picked that one person, the black people voted for him because then we came together in unity because we were tired of what we had been getting from the white people that had been over us in a city that was primarily black. This time, we didn't meet. Out of ignorance, we decided we're going to run 19 people against one Caucasian. And the vote was split in all those different ways. If we had put all those votes together, we wouldn't have Jim Strickland as the mayor. But because we didn't meet, we didn't come together, we didn't overcome our barriers of religion and all these other ideologies that we suffer under, then here's somebody who walked into the position with 42% of the vote, I'm told. But that's sad. Because if we can, if we if we're gonna do anything political, I hate politics because I think it's full of crooks and criminals, personally. And I'll tell you that every time I sit at this table, I have seen too many politicians go to out of their office in handcuffs. And some of those that end, end up leaving the office after they didn't win re-election were sometimes indicted later. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's too much power and too much money and too much greed. But these politicians, like right now, we got the situation with Lipscomb. they putting that on, Mayor Warden, a former Mayor Warden. Then we got that situation with Deidre Malone and the $800,000 contract with the body camera for the police department. They even attaching that to him. It's full of criminals, I promise you. <laughs> but again, if we're going to have any kind of power at all to direct those tax dollars to help our people, we've got to come together in unity. I wish those guys that had ran against me at Warden had come together prior to running for office and decided who is the best candidate among the four or five of us. And then we will let you run, and then when you win, then you can appoint us to offices in your cabinet. Well, that's why I mentioned the two other entities. 